Well, hello and welcome to Elevate Him Live. This is our Tuesday Night Live where we as a team love to come and share truth, uh, tackle some of the relevant topics that are going on in the world right now, and just dive into the truth from God's Word. Our hope and our prayer is that everything that we say lands and God uses just one piece of truth shared to impact your lives. And here's the truth. It is no secret that we are in the middle of crazy, unprecedented times. You've heard, if you haven't had a chance to listen to the last two weeks where Mark has shared his heart for what's going on in the world around us, I encourage you and challenge you to take a look back. But as a team, as a ministry, Elevate Him is here to promote, encourage, and connect. We want to promote the name of Jesus. So we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about what God's doing. We're going to talk about Jesus and who he is in our our everyday lives. So we want to promote, we want to encourage the body of believers and we want to encourage those who have not yet chosen to believe. And we also want to connect. We want to connect with you guys because you are the reason why we do what we do. God called this ministry over 10 years ago to promote, encourage, and connect. And we do that because Sons and daughters, men and women, families need more of what God has for them and less of what the world has for us. You know, we do what we're called to do through ministry to individuals. We offer freedom events and resources and also to families offering fully connected marriage events and our fully connected marriage resources. And if you are new to the Elevate Him family, we want you guys to know that we also try to make resources available to you guys at no cost. So we have three version Bible plans that if you go to YouVersion, the Bible app, that's the brown Bible on your phone, and you search fully alive living, fully connected marriage, or 21 days to cultivate a grateful heart, you'll be able to connect with some of those resources that we've been able to offer the world at no cost because we stand by what we believe, which is to promote, encourage, and connect. But today, I'm here, my name is Megan Lacefield, and I serve as a part of the team at Elevate Him, and I'm here to talk with you guys just a little bit about parenting. Mark asked me a few weeks ago to share my heart as a mom, because in the middle of where we're at, it's easy to get overwhelmed, it's easy to get discouraged. Life as we knew it a year from today, a year earlier, looked nothing like it does today. All you have to do is walk into a grocery store, get on an airplane, or if you have kids in school, things just aren't the same as they used to be. And even in the middle of things not looking and feeling the same as they used to be, the truth is the principles that you'll find here in God's word, they don't shift, they don't change. They are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I've been in ministry for the last 20 years, but early in my ministry, God impressed a scripture on my heart not just for the ministry that he asked me to be a part of, but for my home, for my family. And I want to read it to you real quick before I dive in. And if you've been in church for any amount of time, you've probably heard the scripture. And I'm hoping just to shed a little bit of light on how we can parent on purpose in the middle of whatever you're walking through based on this scripture. So it's in Deuteronomy 6 where it talks about, Hear, O Israel, be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. And here's the next part. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates. And what I love about this scripture is it first starts with me. I can only be the parent, the wife, the friend, the leader that God has asked me to be if I am loving God with my whole heart, with my soul, and with my strength. And even when the world around me feels shaky, even when politics or things going on in the media or what I'm hearing or being surrounded with, even in my workplace or my home, when I could tend to lean to discouragement, 
disappointment, frustration. What this word says is that my job is to love God and to love him first and to love him most. What that looks like in everyday life, it's not about a checklist of all the things that I'm supposed to do as a Christian. It's not about get up, have your quiet time, spend time in prayer, journal in your journal. While all of those things are important and good, loving God with my whole heart, with my whole mind, and with my whole strength happens in every single choice I make from the time I get up until the time I go to sleep. What I allow my heart and my mind to focus on. That includes what I'm watching before I fall asleep because even those things affect my sleep and affect what I think about and what is going on in my brain. So if I am a wife, and a mom, and a friend, and a leader, and a daughter who is called to love God more than anything else. And if I'm putting my best effort into knowing and loving God and sharing that love with the people around me, then ultimately that is the key to parenting on purpose. But it goes on to say that we have to impress them on our children. You know, the cool thing is, is when you think about the word impress, that's if I'm impressed with somebody, it's because of something I've seen or heard. It's not because they told me to be impressed with them, it's because I was watching them. I have plenty of people in my life who are incredible leaders, incredible communicators, incredible friends, um, you name it. And I also have a lot of things that I try to read or keep in front of me or listen to that I can be impressed with. And not because I wanna be impressed with the person, but because I want to watch and I want to see who God is and what he's doing and learn from it. So we're supposed to impress these things on our kids. We're supposed to talk about them when we walk along the road, when we lie down and when we get up. Those are three times a day, three conversations we get to have with our kids. I used to love having this conversation with my kids. So when we, when we walk along the road, when we lie down and when we get up, the first thing I say to my kids, even to this day, when I see my daughter or my granddaughter, it's good morning, how are you? I hope you have a fabulous day, I love you. I do the same thing, I have the same interactions and encounters with my husband or with my son who's working in another state if I get to talk to him on the phone. It's always the same, it's a greeting, it's an encouragement, it's a charge for the day. So when you get up, when you lie down, when before we go to bed what are the things that you're saying to the people that are most important to you and when you walk along the road we don't really walk along the road as much anymore like they did in the old testament but we drive my favorite thing when my kids were younger i took a carpool so i had a whole car load and we would always go get snacks and it was when we had a wendy's and we could go get the dollar frosties and dollar french fries so we would get a car load full of dollar frosties and dollar french fries and the question of the day would be What's your high low? What's your high from today? What's your low from today? And your low is nothing terrible or monumental, but it's just something that, that didn't go well for you. And having those conversations with my kids has set a groundwork for even today at a family dinner, we'll talk about our high lows. And my kids are adults, well into adulthood, have their own families, and hopefully are carrying some of these things into their homes as well. But as I prayed and I prepared and I asked God, what is the word that he has for us today as we are learning to mom, to dad, to parent, to be a wife, to be a husband in the middle of this season of life? What is it that we need to do to parent on purpose? Because if we are parenting on purpose, God will be glorified and our kids will will reap the benefits. And there were three words that I heard that I wanted to share with you guys. And the first one is this. And this is something that I learned from going back and asking my kids who are 24 and 21 what I could have done differently. So I'm letting you glean from and learn from things that I might not have done perfectly, but I know that I did the best that I knew how at the time. So I just wanna share how to do it even better. And that is to share. Share with your kids. Share what's going on in your mind, in your heart. I know there were times that I would be worried about things when my kids were younger and they'd be like, what's wrong, mom? And I'm like, nothing, I'm good, I'm fine. And I wouldn't be honest 
with them about my own personal struggles. And as adults, they did share that they wish that I had been more open about what I was struggling with because instead I just turned all of my attention to their struggles, either trying to fix or solve the problems or come up with solutions. And I didn't let them be a part of, of my personal life. So share with your kids and we don't have to give them all the details. We don't need to give them all the details. We don't need to belittle or defame other people if we're having trouble with somebody at work. You don't have to tell them who and all the details, but you can tell them that you're struggling with a relationship or you're struggling with getting along with somebody or you're struggling with feeling insignificant or whatever it is that is trying to get a hold of you. And with things going on, we can all worry about what's going to happen in November or in four years from now or fill in the blank. Every day we have an opportunity to share openly and honestly with our kids, guarding their hearts with what we share, but not that we share. And thing number two is to serve. I remember a day distinctly, I was incredibly frustrated um, with my relationship with one of my children. I wasn't frustrated with the child, I was frustrated with our relationship. And I just, I was crying out to God because I wanted it to be different. I wanted it to feel different. And what I felt like God say in that moment is serve them. And I was like, but I already do all this stuff, God. But I felt like, again, all I heard him say was serve them. So I have an opportunity, a unique opportunity every single day to serve my kids in a way that nobody else can. There is a world that wants to serve up everything they need on a silver platter. But the truth is I get to serve the truth from God's word. I get to live it in a way that they can see it, taste it, experience it. And I can do things for them because number one, I have access. Number two, I have insight. And number three, I have an, an unparalleled love for these kids. So I can serve them motivated and rooted in love because I love Jesus, I can love my kids. And because I love my kids, I can serve them. And not to the detriment of my husband or to the detriment of, of the rhythm of our home, but there are things that I can do that aren't always fun, but I can do them because I love them. And the third thing is this, is to support. So it's to share, to serve, and to support. And support is one that really came out I, I wish I had done better when they were young and wanted to have conversations about things that I, was, I would sometimes shut down because I thought they were silly conversations or they didn't matter. Um, whether they were wrestling in their faith or wrestling with relationships, you know, we try to fix the problems so fast sometimes when instead we just are there to offer support and to encourage, but really to support their hopes and dreams. I'm the mom of a daughter who launched a business three years ago and is celebrating her third anniversary and of a son who has his own business who just ventured out recently. And I share that to say, I get to be their biggest cheerleader and their biggest fan. And I get to let them go and I get to let them mess up. Because if I could rewind, I would give my kids more opportunities to mess up instead of trying to shield and protect them so much. Because if I don't give them opportunities to mess up, I also don't give them opportunities to make great choices. So support your kids' dreams. You know, we have to fight fiercely to help them see life outside of this immediate moment that they're in. Whether they are toddlers, preschoolers, elementary kids, preteens, teenagers, college students, young adults, it doesn't matter. We want them to be forward thinkers and dreamers because God is a big God who cares about the deepest desires of our hearts. And we want them to believe and trust that same God with the deepest desires of their hearts and we get to champion those things with them. And so when it comes to, to supporting their dreams and desires, we have to believe in their dreams because they can sniff out a fake like nobody's business. And if you're faking it till you make it to believe in their dreams, they're going to know it. But what harm is there in believing in the dreams that are inside of them? Whether they succeed or fail, they can still trust that their parents loved them 
right where they were and their parents believed in them no matter what whether they whether they pass or fail success or demise whatever that looks like the more opportunities we give them to do that inside of their home the safer they'll be when they step outside of our homes and so I just want to leave you with this. As you believe in their dreams, you also get to defend their dreams. So we believe in their dreams. We believe this, that we can do this. We can parent in this generation with this series of things that are going on in the world. We can do this. God specifically designed each and every one of us to parent the kids that we're parenting. Nobody else is qualified. I cannot dismiss or discharge what God has given me full power and authority to do. And I have to live like I believe it. I have to live like I believe God's going to give me everything I need to be the mom that they need in every season, stage, situation, and circumstance. And first, and the last thing is, is I have to believe the best. Believe the best in my kids. Believe the best to be true. Believe the best for our family, in our family, trusting and knowing that God's got this. I remember a moment when I was crying out to God for my kids and he told me in my spirit, I felt God say, I've got this. And I remember being like that, that toddler shaking my fist at God saying, but God, you don't got this the way I want you to got this. But the reality is the way that God's got it was so much better than I could have asked or imagined. I could have tried to manipulate and facilitate and structure it to be exactly what I thought it would be. But when I moved out of the way and I let God be God for me and for my kids, then he did miraculous and wonderful things that I will never stop thanking him for. So as we dive into uh, this fall season, as our kids are going back to school, things feel a little bit more back to normal, I wanna challenge you to really take time, share with your kids what's going on in you, with you, for you, serve your kids, because it is our greatest privilege to get to do that, to support their dreams and to believe fiercely. And if you're struggling to believe, if you're struggling to believe God, if you're struggling to believe your kids, just press in and ask him for everything that you need to be able to do that. Because I promise you what he has on the other side of it is far beyond what we could ask or imagine. And I wanna leave you with this challenge. If there is something in your life that you're struggling to believe God for, would you just leave that in the comments here? Because we have a team that prays fiercely and is committed to consistently praying for you. And it's not because we wanna know your stuff, it's because we want to link arms with you. We've had countless couples reach out that they're struggling in their marriage or struggling, people struggling with their kids, um, with anxiety going through the roof with all of the things that are happening in our world right now. I don't know what it is, but if there is something that you are struggling to believe, will you just either leave that in the comments, send us a direct message, or email info at elevatehim.com so our team can pray with and pray for you. And don't forget, if you didn't get to see the last few weeks, take a few minutes, scroll back through our Facebook page or head over to our YouTube channel and take a listen because Mark shared some powerful words and powerful encouragement about what's going on in our world and important things that we need to know and we need to be in unity about. And if we're in unity as the body of Christ, God will be glorified. I just want to pray for us before we end tonight. God, thank you so much that you've trusted me to be the parents that my kids need, that you've trusted me to be the wife that my husband needs, that you've trusted me to be the friend that my friends need, and you've trusted me to be the leader that you have wired and equipped me to be, to use me for your, for your glory, for your kingdom. And God, I pray that each one of us would walk boldly 
as we learn to parent on purpose, or as we are reminded to parent on purpose, that we would press in, that we would share openly and honestly, that we would serve relentlessly, and that we would always be a source of support. We love you, and we're so thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions about Elevate Him or anything that we've got going on or anything that I may have talked about today, be sure to shoot an email to info at elevatehim.com. We love you guys. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon.